The internet has transformed the buying habits of many of us. If you think about it, clothes, books, holidays, flights, but why not cars? That's the question that Kazoo attempted to answer when they set out to disrupt the car buying market. Over the last three years, particularly in Europe, it seems like Kazoo has been almost everywhere. Who else has seen them? From football clubs to snooker to golf, Kazoo has sponsored a range of elite sporting teams and competitions, as well as investing heavily into paid advertisements. The advertisement effort clearly worked, as Kazoo was one of Europe's fastest growing online used car retailers. In 2021, Kazoo had a market value of $8 billion, which is incredible when you consider that they only started two years prior. However, less than two years later, in January 2023, the stock price has gone down by 99% and is now valued at $104 million. What happened? Well, today, I want to take a closer look at Kazoo, how they came to be, and ultimately, where things went wrong. How they came to be. Alex Chesterman is a founder and a serial entrepreneur. When Alex was three, he founded Screen Select, which was a video renting company, similar to Blockbuster, but online. Then they grew with acquisitions, eventually forming LoveFilm, which expanded into Europe. They then pivoted into video streaming, eventually being bought out by Amazon for £200 million in 2011. We all know it as Amazon Prime Video today. Following this, he then started a property website called Zoopla. This followed a similar theme, growing by acquisition, before becoming one of the leaders in the property space. This was then sold for £2.2 billion. As we can see, Alex is very successful, which helped when convincing early investors to invest in this new venture, Kazoo. I imagine that investors would have been thinking everything that Alex touched seemed to turn into gold. Is that possible? Everything could turn into gold? It certainly seemed that way. Kazoo is an online used car company, which was modeled off a US car company called Kavana. Many investors looking at Kavana's story would have seen Kazoo as an opportunity to make a lot of money in the UK and European market. How they got so big. Kazoo was able to raise vast sums of money through investment rounds and put the money into use, acquiring other companies across the UK as well as Europe. It was difficult to avoid Kazoo as it sponsored many sporting events and Premier League football clubs, for example, Aston Villa and Everton. This was done to improve brand awareness and also to build trust with customers, as this would be very important with the price of cars being so high. Kazoo partnered with commercial partners to gain from their expertise and get things done quicker. For example, BCA, more properly known as WeBuyAnyCar.com, they looked after the refurbishment of the vehicles, so, so effectively fixing any issues with the cars and making them into a saleable fashion, as well as auctioning off cars bought through part exchange. Ultimately, what went wrong? Kazoo has had a poor financial almost throughout its existence. Investors would have been alarmed that Kazoo are not getting the basics right. Taking a closer look, it looks like the reconditioning of the vehicles, so basically fixing it and bringing it up to standard, and the amount paid for the cars were too expensive. There was a change in attitude of investors as they shifted their preference towards profit-making companies, which made Kazoo's situation difficult. USP was not difficult to copy, so it was mainly going on brand awareness, i.e. being a trusted brand, offering a guarantee and promising to thoroughly check the car. This means that the competition would be easily able to replicate this as long as they had the financial muscle to fund their marketing campaign, which is what happened when a newcomer came on the scene called Cinch and copied the idea. The people behind Cinch was BCA, who used to work with Kazoo, reconditioning the vehicles on their behalf. Cinch clearly thought they could do it themselves and set out on competing with Kazoo. Their marketing was very good, using a well-known presenter and former Big Brother contestant Rylan in the UK to front their campaign, as well as marketing in high-profile sports, just like Kazoo. The increased competition would have impacted the sales of Kazoo, but also in terms of price, limiting the extent to which Kazoo could raise their prices. In addition, car companies saw an opportunity to sell directly to the customer with new cars like Tesla. However, 
they have also begun to sell used cars directly to the customers as well. This again means increased competition to source cars, but also impacts the selling price. Some customers were not fully persuaded to buy online. A lot of customers still want to have a test drive and check out the cars themselves. It is a big purchase after all, and some people depend on a car to commute to work, etc. So may feel that they would prefer to check the cars themselves. This suggests that the customers are not quite there yet in terms of the whole transaction taking place online. Business expansion. Perhaps Kazoo may have expanded too fast. They expanded into Italy, Spain, France and Germany all within two years. As the business in the UK was not yet profitable, it may have made more sense to get the business in the UK in order first before looking to replicate the model abroad. As this has just led to cost multiplying and indeed Kazoo has since pulled out of almost all the countries that it expanded to. There has been external factors. Unprecedented levels of inflation would have reduced the disposable income for customers affecting sales. In addition, higher interest rates would have increased the cost of borrowing, therefore affecting sales as well. Let me know in the comments, what did you think about Kazoo? Did you know it was doomed or were you surprised it didn't last? How was your experience with Kazoo? Thank you for watching.